Hey, good morning, everybody. Ted Haggard here from St. James Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. This morning, it's just a beautiful, beautiful day today. It's going to be raining. It's going to be some sunshine. It's going to be warm spring weather. It's just a perfect Colorado day. And today we're getting together as a group of believers to study Proverbs, the 16th chapter. This is the month of May, and through the month of May in the Bible Highlights booklet, we study through the uh, book of Proverbs, and it's exciting, and then since it's the 16th day, we'll be studying Proverbs 16 today. And by the way, if you'd like a copy of this, you can just uh, send me a text at 719-338-0079, and I'll send you a couple copies of this. If you've written me in the past and I didn't get it to you, just write me again. Sometimes I'm out and about and things are going on and and the uh, team here in the office doesn't get uh, all the booklets sent out. And so we want to be sure and take care of you. And don't feel bad if we've overlooked you. We're not a international parachurch ministry. We are a local church and we take care of our people here at St. James. And then we always are honored to be able to get some of this material to you. Here in Proverbs 16, there are a few verses I just wanted to highlight for you this morning. One is, of course, the first verse where it says, we can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. Every one of us, it's so important for us to plan and prepare and do the best we can at anticipating the future and and working with uh, the lessons of the past so that we can become uh, well-informed and make wise plans, thoughtful plans. Of course, the Bible encourages us to have counselors in life. The Bible encourages us to participate in our family in a life-giving way and in the local church in a life-giving way. And local churches are set up so that the elder team, this is the the, uh, idea here, that the eldership team are people who have lived life well. And so we make plans by getting to know those people, and we trust that those people have done what we want to do. For example, we want to have healthy marriages. So we talk to elders who have long-lasting, good, healthy marriages. We want to produce uh, healthy children. And so we talk to the elders whose children are honorable and trustworthy and dependable, whose children have turned out well. And so so the eldership in a church is kind of like an apprenticeship. They are the ones who have done what we want to do well. So they're older people that have already accomplished what we want to accomplish, whether that be financial planning, whether that be a career, whether that be education, whether that be what types of books to read, what types of movies to watch, whatever it might be. And here it says, though, we can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. So it's emphasizing the fact that God will be involved in what actually happens. In verse nine, it talks about the same thing. It says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. And so that's where we need to know, we need to know all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So make sure you love God, make sure you're called according to his purpose. Then you make your plans, but the Lord, trust the Lord to actually determine your steps. And when it talks about sovereignty here and the power of God, it, it we can also look at verse 33. That's interesting. It says, we may throw the dice, and that's talking about life. That's talking about how things go for us in life. We can throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. And so so we need to make our plans. Then we need to trust the Lord as things actually happen in our lives. The second verse here in Proverbs 16 is also interesting. It says, people may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord determines their motives. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard somebody describing themselves that you know well, but very, very often people see themselves with much more nobility and a lot more virtue and a lot more wisdom than we know they actually have. But the same is true with us. Our self-perceptions are not necessarily very accurate. And so, 
we see ourselves with greater purity than we actually have. Very often we're blind to our own faults. We're blind to our own spirit areas of spiritual poverty. And so we that's another reason why we need to be in a healthy, life-giving local church like St. Saint, Saint James Church in Colorado Springs. And we need to be in healthy families. Uh, this verse, too, is interesting. Uh, it reminds me of Luke 16, 15, where Jesus says, you like to appear righteous in public, but God knows your hearts. What this world honors is detestable in the sight of God. And so that challenges every one of us to really reflect on um, on. Uh, ourselves and our hearts and our lives. I heard one old man say one time, you can tell what you're really like by what you do when you're all alone or what you do in a city where nobody knows you. And, and there are things that happen in our lives that will reveal our own hearts. And that's good for us to, to search our hearts and ask the Lord to purify our hearts and clean us up. In 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses four and five, the Bible says, my conscience is clear, but that doesn't prove that I'm right. This is the Apostle Paul talking about himself. My conscience is clear, but that doesn't prove I'm right. It is the Lord himself who will examine me and decide. And see, that's one of the great delights we have in prayer and in having a good church. Listen, I've seen it over and over again, where a person is to the place where they're really ready to work on their heart issues, and they switch churches. And they do it because it's painful sometimes for us to work on ourselves. Here the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, 5, it says, so don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time. In other words, everybody, we are all in a stage. We're all in process, growing from glory to glory, and so is everyone else. So don't judge somebody by one snapshot of their life. Understand everybody's in process. Everybody is growing, and that's what this verse says. So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns. In other words, until the Lord returns and we see him face to face, everybody is going to be changing. Everybody is going to be growing. It says, for he, God, will bring the darkest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. Then God will give to each whatever praise is due. Now, that says there is judgment. And so every one of us would be better off to judge ourselves ahead of time. And so that's a wonderful, wonderful uh, exhortation. And of course, the Bible helps us do that. The fellowship in the body of Christ helps us do that if it's an authentic life-giving body. And a good life-giving family helps us do that. He, Hebrews 4.4 4 talks about the importance of us studying the scripture. It says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Now, every weekday morning, that's Monday through Friday, at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, we do a verse-by-verse -verse Bible study on Zoom. If you would like to join us, it would be great. You don't have to be there all the time. But jump in with us because we allow the Word of God to sharpen us, to work in us, to reveal our hearts. It's a humbling experience sometimes, but we let the Bible itself do that every weekday morning at 10 o'clock on Zoom. And if you'd like to join with us, the move the, the meeting ID number is 719-338-0079. And we just ask that the first time or two you time or two you come that let us uh it's a conversation discussion format, kind of get used to the group. It's a small group. And then uh, jump in with us the, the third or fourth time and in, and in with us continually while you're with us, because it's a discussion group where we let the word of God refine us. And so back to Proverbs 16, 2, where it says people may be pure in their own eyes. That's all of us. 
but the Lord examines our motive. I've noticed through the years, we tend to judge other people based on what they do, but we judge ourselves based on our motives. And, and of course, you can't tell other people's motives. We only know about other people by what they do and what they say. If we guess their motives, we're actually exposing ourselves as foolish. One more verse here before we go, and that is in verse 3. Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. Here, here, this commit your actions to the Lord, that's because we don't know the future. We don't know all the details about the past. We need to do the best we can making our plans. But it, it, it is the Lord who really knows what's going to happen. And so, like today, I have to make a big decision, and there are two people in the body of Christ I'm calling to get their counsel. I talked to one of them just before this, and I'm going to talk to one the other one later today. And, and uh, so I'm going to get their wisdom because I know what I want to do, but I'm a little apprehensive about it. And so I want to talk to a couple experts in the body of Christ. And my position is I never ask people their opinion unless I'm going to do what they say. And so I only ask people that I already respect. It reminds me of the verse in James 4, verses 14 through 16, where it says, How do you know what your life will be tomorrow? Your life is like a morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans, and all such boasting is evil. In other words, if we say, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, we aren't quite sure. We don't know here. I'm 64 years old. I'm going to be 65 next month. I don't know with my heart, my lugs, and body parts, not what they were when I was 19 years old, for me to say I'm going to do such and such next year might be really presumptuous. All right. So I say, if the Lord wills it, if the Lord plans it, because only the Lord really knows us. In Proverbs, the third chapter, the sixth verse, it says, seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. In Psalm 37, 5, the Bible says, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. And in Psalm 90, verses 16 and 17, the Bible says, let us, your servants, seek you, see, uh, see you work again. Let our children see your glory, and may the Lord our God show us his approval and make our efforts successful. Yes, make our efforts successful. See, none of us have assurance for tomorrow. And now my favorite verse, and I say this a lot because I have a lot of favorite verses depending on the day, but this is we're back in the day when I published a lot of books and traveled a lot and would sign a lot of books for folks. This was the verse I always signed in people's books when they wanted a verse of mine. It's 1 Peter 5, 7, which says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. So that may be the theme for the day. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Listen, fellowship in a healthy way with one another in the body of Christ is priceless. Having good friends are the greatest of treasures. And being able to commit our path to the Lord and just trust him, knowing that all things work together for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose, that's, that's a treasure. That's a peace that passes all understanding that some people never have. But that doesn't mean you need to never have it. You can have it by seeking the Lord today. Turn to him. It's a Sunday. It's the first day of the week. It's time to seek the Lord and time to enjoy his presence, his care, his provision, and his life for all of us. Hey, God bless you. You have a wonderful week this week. It would be wonderful to see you in the Bible study. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye.